we doing guys welcome back to the channel and this is my history of comparison slash changes video um i did something very similar to this in the past that i sent off to uh, shona and trent who i got some good feedback from they they bounced it around their offices as well and i'm just doing it again with history in its current state the reason it's taking me so long to make this video in the first place is my previous video i'd be using wizard the whole time for all the months that i've been playing Whereas as soon as the new changes were made, the reroll coupons came out, so I completely rolled off Wizard. And I just didn't feel like it was right for me to make that video using a class that I hadn't used in the past. That I haven't optimized the class. Now that I've had plenty of time with the class, I could definitely feel comfortable making this video. I have now been, I don't know how long I've been grinding history. I don't know, nine months, getting closer to a year. It's been a long time. So I've got a lot of experience in terms of this very specific grind zone i know the mechanics of this place really really well and i feel like i know what would happen if certain changes were made in terms of the overall effect of those changes and this video is definitely going to be slightly longer so i apologize about that in advance i'll probably apologize about it at the end of the video as well i'm going to try and keep my thoughts as constructive as possible but if i do rage if i do enter rage mode every now and again i'm just again going to apologize in advance and i'm just going to straight up blame the coronavirus for that being cooped up at home for all these months is driving me a little bit mad i literally haven't left the house uh, just a quick thing a lot of people probably don't know about me i've got cystic fibrosis so if i do catch this thing it's pretty deadly for me and i've been paying for the antibody test which i did about a week ago i haven't had it in the past so i've still got to be really really careful but yeah so like i said going a little bit crazy getting stuck at home for all these months but anyway i'm just going to start with a quick summary at the beginning um just for the people on youtube if you're just interested to know which is the quote unquote best room so as it stands the black shard room is the best room in terms of getting trash and black shards but it's in close compare close competition with the five elton room five elton room is also really really good at getting trash and on top of that it's got the most elthons in it so you've got more chance of getting tongue grad necklaces you do get a lot of red shards unfortunately which is you know if you don't have red shards it's a good thing but if you grind it for a long time you're going to end up having like 20 plus red shards with nothing to combine them with. But again, you get more chance of tongue grad necklaces and the Elton compass part. The big difference is once you get to really high APs, uh, you will find that the five Elton will cap at around 3,200 trash. Whereas the black shard room caps at around 36 to 3,700 trash. So it really just becomes more worth the higher APs sticking to the Kalkish rotation and cutting off the 5 Elton rotation. You can extend the 5 Elton rotation um, to add an extra mob in, but it's a bit weird with the way it works. I'll get into more of that in the video later on. You only end up pulling like at most 3300 trash, so you still end up being significantly behind the Black Shard room by 300 trash at that point. But up until you hit that 3200 trash marker, there's only like 100, maybe at most 200 trash difference between 5 Elton and Black Shard. So they're pretty close to each other. However, it just depends what you're looking for when you're grinding. After those two would be 3 Tanko is uh, behind those two rooms. It's going to be about 100 trash behind the 5 Elton room and about 300 trash behind the Black Shard room once you get everything optimized. And finally, main rotation and side rotation, they're going to be your two least grinded rotations. They're going to be consistently two, 300 trash behind 5 Elton, at least 200 trash behind 5 Elton and like four, 500 trash behind Black Shard room. So those are the quick fire summaries of the rooms. Obviously, each room has its own characteristics. I'll be getting into that later in the video. So the first room we're going to start off with is the Kalkish rotation. Now, when I started doing this testing, I did not have a Tet Tongrad necklace. So the clear speech is not going to be the same of what I'm showing you here and what it was when I did the testing. Another thing to keep in note when I did the testing is I had my alchemy stone on me. I also had a bunch of elixirs. So what you see now will not be an accurate representation of what it actually was like to grind these rooms during the test period but what i will emphasize is during these tests everything was uniform i had same buffs same gear 
and I use the same skill rotation, which I have changed now when having more AP. But at the time with the AP I was at, the rotation I was using I deemed to be the most efficient way to grind. Now, what I can tell you is with more AP, all the underlying principles between the characteristics of the room and the differences is just emphasized. Nothing changes. It was like, oh, when you have more AP, this problem doesn't exist anymore. This difference doesn't exist anymore. It's actually the opposite. That problem or that difference kind of gets emphasized with more AP because you're clearing faster, which then increases the gap between room A and room B. So to start off here, we're going to grab the two demos on the wall and the two demos on the scaffolding. And then this next part here is personal, personal preference. I tried to get the uh, tanker aggro to this mob as well. Really doesn't make a difference to my trash for hour. It's just a quirk that I like to do. Um, but end of the day, you clear it up as you normally would. And then what you would do, there's two mobs left over. You pull it to the next pack. So this next part here is important. It makes about 50 different, uh, 50 trash difference if you don't do it right. Uh, what you want to do is try and aggro the demo. So I messed up there and I got two calculations instead. Like I said, it's not a huge difference. It makes about a 50 trash difference. In my testing, it was off and on. Um, depending on my grind when I was doing the testing, most of the time I got the demo to aggro, but sometimes I messed it up like you see me did, like you see I did there and the demo didn't aggro so it did make small changes into my into the optimal amount of trash that you can make in this room when we look at the numbers um, and the reason is as you can see when we come down here um, we have to then aggro the pack back up because if we don't do it the demo deaggros and in this particular circumstance the demo deaggroed there normally that doesn't happen I'll, I'll be a bit faster than i am but because i was recording this um, for this video specifically, I was a bit more lax and I wasn't trying very hard. Um, so like you'd have to move the mobs twice. You move the mobs down and the mobs back up. So it takes a little bit longer, which increases the time that it takes to, uh, clear the mob, which decreases the trash. But like I said, about 50, but that's a very small nuance. And then finally this Elton here, quick, easy, just bring everything to the Elton, clear them. Perfect. In my opinion, this room is perfect nothing needs to change there's the small nuance with the demo but that's absolutely fine it's a very small room this is the gold standard we want other rooms to be like this in terms of the flow i think the reason it's not mainly because of the trash people come here i just think of how easy it is and how nice it this room flows when you're grinding it i think that's why most people are here but you would then rinse and repeat just a Quick note, um, you can also integrate the, the the Bolton in this room into your pools. If you do integrate the Bolton into your pools, you have to change it slightly. I'm not going to show it here, but the overall effect is you lose about 100 trash an hour. Pretty consistent. I did quite a few tests. It was about 100 trash an hour um, that you'd lose incorporating the Bolton just because of the way the mobs work in this room. Therefore, when I'm grinding, I don't include the Bolton in my rotation. It's not worth it. And to have a quick look at the trash. So this is what I was pulling during the test. Around 3,400, 3,500 marker, which is equivalent to 51 to 52 million. If you want to know the exact details of um, how I standardize my tests, that you can find up there. Everything was done with a loot scroll. Pets were all on Agile. I've got all the Bartani books completed. This is a list of elixirs and food buffs that I used and all the tests were done on the ninja with the exact same gear for every single room with the alchemy stone, with the body enhancement villa, with the Camus Sylvia Beth blessing and none of the tests were done on Asha. So for the next room, we're going to be looking at the five Elton rotation. So just to show you how I clear this room, we just come in over here, make sure we got everything's attention and then we wait in this corner out a skill or two whilst we wait for the elton to come round when the elton comes round we then come back down here and we clear everything as you would with whatever class you're using so as you can see the first pool is a bit of a longer pool so even though this is a short room it's got two longer pools that just slow you down a little bit that will be affecting our trash numbers so that's pool number one Pool number two is the next slow pool. So we hit everything 
And then you have to do it right so the Elton comes up to meet you as quickly as possible. If you do it wrong, this part gets extended. But then when the Elton's in position and you got everything lined up, you come behind this first Elton. You just have to wait a little bit for everything to group up. And then when everything is grouped up, you get behind it and you clear it out as you normally would. So once that's done, we're then going to come over here, grab those two demos, grab everything else. Always go behind the Vodkins if um, there's no Eltons in the pool because the Vodkins are the next most stationary class. But again, just clear them out as you normally would. And then once that's cleared out, we come to the last pool over here. Now, there's usually a Kalkisha that comes up behind you here. It's your choice on whether or not you want to clear him or pull him to the next patch. Next pack, sorry. So normally I just pull him to the next pack and I rinse and repeat. So as you can see, a very, very small room. But now let's talk about the numbers and why it's a bit different to the Kalkisha rotation. So let's look at the five Elton numbers. As you can see, I had roughly 31 to 3200 trash per hour. Now, the caveat is this room caps at around 3200. In the tests, there's very few times I had just to wait a little bit for the couple of the mobs to respawn to restart the rotation from the beginning. So this probably impacted me maybe 30 to 50 trash. Not a lot because I was on that borderline with the clear speed that I had during the test. <clears throat> so really and realistically, if you don't take that cap in consideration, it's about 250 to 300 trash difference between Black Shard Room and 5 Elton Room. If you want to decrease that um, trash difference, what you could do is add two demos near the center pillar. That will take the last pack in the rotation to max capacity. And that should, I think, uh, decrease the gap by about 100. So you'd be looking at about 150 to 200 trash difference between the two rooms. I don't think that's necessary because this room has a very distinct personality. It's called the Five Elton Room because it has five Eltons. The reason that's important, it increases your chance of getting Tarn Rag necklaces. It also increases your chance of getting the Elton Compass part. So I don't believe that needs to be changed, but it can be to make the room nicer if that's what you like to do. But one thing I would say definitely does need to be adjusted is the respawn rates, just to bring it more in line with the Black Shard room. Just increase the respawn rates so that you're not waiting for the first mob to spawn if you have high clear speeds. I think this would be a great help. And the reason I'm leaning towards the respawn rates, because as it is right now, the way it works is when you come back to the first mob, even when you do overclear, there's usually one or two mobs that respawn and they'll try and follow you to your extension in the other room. So what that does is it decreases, it increases the amount of time that it takes to clear the sixth Elton in the opposite room um, because you have to wait for the other ones to de aggro to do damage to the, the next pack, some of the mobs in the next pack. So that decreases your speed a little bit. Also, on top of that, what ends up happening is when you come back into the room, it's a 50 50 chance. Some of the mobs that were following you haven't reset properly. There's a bit of a glitch when Kalkishas and Eltons are trying to reset, even sometimes Demos, that they just, they take an extraordinary, they'll get back to their reset position, but they won't reset straight away. It actually takes them a long time to reset. That has huge compounding issues with your clear speed. So that is the issue. So that's why I'd like just to see the respawn rates increased to take away from that specific problem that happens when you're having to go to when you have to go to different rooms because you're over clearing so now for the honorable mention i don't know the name of this room but it's one directly connected to the five elton and the reason it's an honorable mention because this does not come up in my testing i did not test this room i do not take this room seriously because it only has one elton so the underlying issues for me personally as a player in this room is one it's a large room so doing the full circle, it ends up being jank. You're not going back to the first mob when to start the pack. You kind of start in the middle and it's all over the place. You can cut the rotation in half to make it different than when I showed you. But then the other issue I had with that, but the other issue I had with that, it wasn't a circular rotation. It was very like zigzaggy and jagged. When I'm grinding, which I think a lot of people do after an excessive period of grinding, the beginning is a bit different. But after you've grinded hundreds and if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of hours, 
you kind of just zone out you, you know you do your circular path you're listening to music you're listening to podcasts you're watching the black desert stream when you guys do your patch notes you know you, you're doing other stuff on the side and you're grinding your money and you're kind of just relaxing it's kind of like a diablo feel when you're grinding like good old school diablo days so that's kind of like the way i look at grinding i know it's different at the beginning the beginning is more exciting you're figuring things out that's why i like when this changes as well it, you know it's fun when you change something it, as long as you don't mess it up it's fun kind of figuring out the new rotations you know you're mid maxing but once you got that mid max in position it's about cruise control and you can't cruise control this room this room is very jagged so i'd break this room into four rotations to get that circular feel semi-circular anyway so you start with this uh first part as it was so you could leave this untouched but the other problem with this room that we mentioned earlier is um there's just not that many cow quiches and like good mobs it's just a lot of these uh burmol demol mobs the little circular mobs that aren't a very bad mob in my opinion so what you could do is maybe just replace a couple of these demos some cow quiches just you know make it a bit nicer then coming over here take this back to the old school days back what we had on console before the 40 percent change um bring the elton and all the mobs over here to bring it back to max make sure you bring back the vodkins and the cow quiches as well so this pool comes to um max capacity and then this would be number two of four because i just think with the way the respawn rates are working is having four mobs to be your core pool right so then you get this out of the way and then we're going to come over here now as you can see again there's a lot of demos over here so you know switch them out put a vodka in here get like three four cow quiches in here so it's just it's a nice it's a nice pool you know and here's here's the bonus you've got the bolton and the bolton can drop the compass part so you got your bonuses as well a little bit of give and take and once you clear these guys out so this is mob number three we come over here to mob number four now there's just too many mobs here so in my opinion if you want it to you know maybe this is the mob you have to wait a little bit have them a little bit spread out you know have a couple of mobs over here have a couple of mobs over here have the bolton over here and have a couple of mobs over here but again not too many so this is at capacity so skim the fat there's too many mobs here skim the fat bring it to capacity and make sure everything can easily be pulled to this bolton over here and have a nice distribution of again demos vodkins and cow quiches and then this could be your last pull and then you go back to the beginning so you've got a nice circular motion and then that will bring this room in line with all the other rooms and then you know that's that'll be nice and then you know you can cut some mobs out of here if you feel that increased performance or what you could do is have like this is the baby section right this is this can be the little baby room for people that are just starting out you can have you don't even have to bring it to max capacity you have like eight mobs over here have eight mobs over here and have eight mobs over here and you know people coming out you could be like hey this will be where you start out but if that means there's too many mobs and the whole reason the 40 percent nerf that it impacts performance what you could do is just leave some mobs in this area cut them down to increase performance but leave some of the mobs in this area nice and spread out so it doesn't look empty it feels nice and full but your main packs up there if you do that you bring the second elton back you make you distribute these mobs nicely so there's just more cow quiches in comparison to demos this can actually be a really good rotation it could be on the lines of the cow quiche rotation i'd say make sure that the respawn rates cap the room around 3000 3000 make sure sorry not 3000 make sure that the um room caps around 3500 3600 so it brings it in line with the cow quiche rotation maybe not as many cow quiches because you've got more boltons in here so you've got more compass parts but definitely more cow quiches than it currently offers in some of the pools that we mentioned and then this room could be nice and it would bring it back up to par with the other rooms and i would test it out and i'd recommend people coming here but as it is this is the last room that i would grind 
one day when his shit becomes really, really full, then, you know, I want to relax and grind. This is where I'll be when I don't want to get disturbed. Okay, so let's talk about the three tanko room. Just remember the whole purpose of this video is to not make everything the same, but bring all the rooms within a acceptable limit whilst letting all the rooms having their own characteristic. So the issue with this room, it just falls very far behind the five, both the five Elton and the Kalkish. The characteristic of the room is that it's got three tankos. It's also got three Eltons. So it's a pretty decent room. Like it's a good chance to get tongue rad necklaces. It's a better chance of getting the, um, the Elton compass part in comparison to the Kalkish rotation. So those are the kind of characteristics it has. But the other characteristics is a very large room. So that leads us to our first main issue is this pack over here. Now, I mentioned this in the last video and I'm going to mention it again. So issue number one is we have to wait for this Elton to step forward a little bit before bringing everything to this Elton. Because if we don't do that, the demos that are here just don't aggro far enough and they end up de-aggroing. So that slows it down. I remember when I said this is the largest room out of all of them, um, except for maybe the previous room that I just showed you. But we're not even taking that into consideration. And if you make the recommended changes that I said, it will also substantially reduce the size of the room when it comes to the mobs that you're putting. So issue number two, as you can see, there's one too many mobs. So my suggestion, I've got two suggestions. One is cut out one mob, whether it's that skinny tutu car or one of the demos is up to you. But do not cut out a Kalkisha or a vodka or especially the Elton. What I would do instead is the four, let me just kill this Elton real quick, is the four demos that used to be there, replace them with those demos that used to be here, right? Um, that way they're all gonna aggro to the Elton and there's not gonna be an aggro issue. You can leave the uh, Kalkisha that used to be there as it was, but just put the old mobs that used to be here back. So what will happen is you're no longer above max capacity and you can just drag everything over here and start your grind. Um, the reason, now I'm just going to aggro this guy on purpose here. The reason it's important that you do this is because, well, to at least reduce the mobs by one, it's a double compounding issue. So now when we come over here, we're going to have two mobs. Well, normally it'll be two mobs. That guy de -aggroed. It's hit and miss. Sometimes that guy will aggro over here and it causes you to elongate the amount of time that it takes to aggro this pack. And you have at the beginning two packs that are on um you have two uh two mobs that don't aggro properly but you always have one mob that's ended up left over and it's not always i could tell you right now i've done quite a lot of grinding in this room it's not always the mob that was over here i just have to wait because someone else has just come in here and grinded that spot i just have to wait for it to respawn but it's not always this guy. Sometimes actually a mob back here that gets left over. So it doesn't aggro to the next pack properly. And that's important when I mention this because I'm, I would recommend one mob to be added to this pack to bring it to max capacity. Um, the reason is, so no, this is how I did it in my test. I'd aggro those two guys and I'd bring it to this Elton. But the, um, the reason I say add one mob is because what you could do to bypass it technically is aggro this Kalkisha over here and wait for the Elton to step up like it's done. The um, the issue that causes when you do this is sometimes the Elton just doesn't step forward. So when the Elton doesn't step forward, uh, that will then mean you just wasted your time, right? So that Kalkisha can't aggro all the way back there. So you've wasted some time. So the most consistent way is just not aggroing that last Kalkisha and just bringing everything back to the original position behind this watchtower and clearing them out as you normally would. So what I'd recommend is just adding one mob, like I said, that one of the mobs that used to be here, doesn't have to be a Kalkisha, it could be even one of the demos, just to get the trash numbers in line. Because um, what you really want is, since this is a larger room, all the packs to be easily pullable and not have any issues. So you don't want any extra fat, you don't want, ex you don't want any extra mobs that ruin the pools, that slow things down. You want everything to be clean and precise. So you want full, four nice full packs like this one here, easily uh, grindable, easy to get them together because you have a long way to go. Uh, there's a lot of movement that you need to do to get from pack to pack in this room. So it, it 
it naturally will slow your progression down in terms of the trash that you can get your potential trash so cut these four guys out put them back over here where they used to be like the other ones that you cut that you did cut out over here put those ones back in their place so you're not doing a waiting game and make sure that it's at max capacity and not one over max capacity which it currently is this one just cut one of the demos or the tutu car over here um, and then that will be a nice clean pack over here and this one just add back one of the demos or one of the calcutions prefer preferably the calcutions over here and then that that's this pack done and then you've got four very nice clean packs and then the characteristic of the room being it's got a nice amount of tankos and a good amount of um, Eltons. So you take a little bit of hit in trash compared to the Kalkish rotation. You get a bit more chance at Tongrad neck drop. You get a bit more chance of the Elton drop. And I think that's what's best for the room. So now just to uh, prove my point when we're looking at the trash numbers, as you can see, it's a little bit less than five Elton. In my opinion, the only room that is justified to have less trash than any other room is the five elton all rooms in my opinion should do a little bit better than the five elton room um, in terms of just the pure trash numbers because this has not the elton's in pretty much everyone's eyes that i've talked to anyway is the best mob in history it's definitely in my eyes the best mob in history so that's why you can take a little bit of a hit here so if you make those changes, I'd imagine that this room be hovering between 32 to 3300. I can't say exactly what it would be without like testing it myself, but I would imagine it'll be 32 to 3300 trash. So it's very comparable. You know, it's only a couple hundred, one to 200 trash off the um, the uh, Black Shard room. So you can say, you know what? I can take a little bit of a hit to increase my chance of getting that Tongrad necklaces, increase my chances of getting the Elton Compass part getting a bit more of jack of all trades you know i'm getting a bit more than the five elton in terms of trash um but i've still got the same number of mobs that can drop the tongue necklaces but i'm getting a bit more trash over here but you know i'm not getting as much trash over here so it's it's you know the whole point when i'm making these suggestions is to open the rooms up to a bit more diversity to allow you to have more choice rather than the clear-cut choices that it is at the minute. All right, and now let's look at the main rotation. So over here, this first pack is perfect. There's nothing that needs to be changed. So we'll just clear these out as we normally would, just to show you what we are doing here. But like I said, there's nothing wrong with this, this pack. The next pack is inherently longer, um, but that's okay because there's a lot of Kalkishas and stuff in there. So it's kind of worth the trade-off. But this room does get a lot less uh, trash than pretty much all the other rooms. And we'll get into that with the pack after this one. But there is a few things that can be adjusted here. Well, one, two things that can be adjusted here just to make it nicer. Just cut out the Bolton and add either an extra Kalkish or just a Demo maybe. Just an extra mob to bring in a capacity. I think it only needs one more mob. If it needs two more mobs, add two more mobs. I can't remember what max capacity is. I never really counted it. It's just, you know... I kind of do it by testing how many mobs I can pull until I can't pull any more. But I can't do that now because there's not enough mobs here to test that. So if it needs one or two more mobs, add one or two more mobs. Just cut that Bolton out because sometimes what happens is um, the Bolton, it, it stays aggroed and it just keeps hitting you in the back as you're trying to clear, which slows down the respawn speeds. Um, unfortunately, that Kalkisha didn't aggro and that does happen sometimes as well. That one specific Kalkisha, I don't know why. The one on the side, it seems to always aggro. This guy sometimes de-aggros, and I don't know why that is. Because as you can see, he can come all the way down here. But it does happen sometimes. I don't think you need to change him, to be honest. Um, if you want to make it easier, just take him out and put another Kalkisha down here. But, you know, that's just a very minor thing that doesn't need to happen. Um, but I would definitely suggest at least taking the Bolton out at the very minimum. Um, but it would be nice to see that Bolton get taken out and an extra mob get put in its place or to make sure that this is at max capacity. This specific Kalkisha is just, you know, it's a, it's an extra bonus thing. Something that I've noticed when grinding. So I'm just pointing it out here. I'm going to finish this guy up so it doesn't mess up, mess up my next pool. So this 100%, this next room has a lot of problems it really slows down the grind because uh, it's compounding issues as well. So definitely take out this bolt. This Bolton has to go. You need to get rid of him. 
and one of these next two Boltons also needs to go. Which Whichever one you want to take is up to you. I would, I'd like bring everything to this corner. That's just personal preference. I got no problem. I'm sure no one else has got any problem bringing everything to this corner. As you can see, as it is right now, we're one uh, mob over the limit. Now that that Bolton de aggroed, this Bolton aggroed. So, not only um, take this Bolton out, but make sure you replace it with another mob to keep the aggro at max. Now, the reason I say this is a compounding issue is when you're coming to the next room, even if you play very carefully, let me just clear these guys out and leave one Bolton alive. If I can not get CC'd all the time. Okay, so if you play your cards right, what would happen is you won't aggro this Bolton, you bring everything to this corner. And if you do your movement absolutely perfectly, you can avoid aggroing this Bolton, which makes the next pull a lot easier. But usually that doesn't happen. You've got to be really perfect. Even if you are perfect with your movement, it still doesn't happen. So this guy ends up coming to the next mob, then reduces, which then reduces how many mobs you can pull in the next room by one, which sucks. It's really bloody annoying. Um, the next issue with this room, I don't know why, but I'm going to have three tests for this next room because of this issue. Sometimes when you do this, that Elton doesn't aggro at all. So then you come up here to aggro two Kalkishas. Sometimes, oops, sometimes you don't get two Kalkishas, you get a Kalkisha and a Demo. That doesn't really matter. But the problem is, the reason I had to redo the test, is if this guy doesn't aggro and he stays there, which happens a lot, a lot more than I expected it to, to be honest, you end up having to then come back all the way to the Elton. So you're wasting a bunch of time. And then those Kalkishas and Demos can't aggro this far back. So you end up just clearing this mob um, under capacity by two. And you've also wasted time on top. So it actually ended up being a detriment trying to take this uh, pack to max capacity uh, rather than a benefit. So I ended up just cutting out the two mobs at the top and just, just killing everything by the doorway. So I just literally come here, aggro everything here and just kill everything here and go to the next pack. Now, because of that one pool, the second pool that I showed you, because that pull is so long, um, you do need everything else to be at mass capacity for it to compete with the other rooms. So there's a lot of benefits to this room and its characteristics. I'll go over it in a minute. But what I would do is just add back the Vodkun and Kalkisha that used to be here pre-nerf. Before the 40% change, there used to be a Kalkisha roughly here and a Vodkun roughly here. So if you add those two mobs back, this can easily go back to max capacity. You have a very nice pull. And you and take the Bolton, the two Boltons out of the other room, at least the two Boltons out of the other room. Um, so you're not pulling an extra mob into this room. You don't want to do that. And then this will be an absolutely really, really good room. You got two Boltons, you have two Boltons in your clear. So you don't have as much as the five Elton, but you've got a little bit more than the three Tanko. But I'll go over that when we're looking at the numbers. So I'll see you in the spreadsheet. So as you can see here in main rotation, I did three tests because the first one was just abysmally low. And that's because of the issue I had with that Elton that I was pointing out. But you're looking between 2,900 2, and uh, 3,000 trash. So again, now you're even worse than the three Tanko in this room. There is an inherent thing that slows down the room, which is the second pool. There's not really much you can do about that. But if you were to make all the other changes, this again, is easily going to be 3,200 trash. I can't see it being less than 3,200 trash. I can see it even being as much as 3,300 trash. We should put the three Tanko in the main rotation pretty much at the same numbers, which would be a little bit above uh, the five Elton and a little bit below the Black Shard room. I think this is pretty important because as we were saying earlier, so in this one, you've got two Eltons and you've got two Boltons, right? So you've got one more chance at getting the Elton Compass part over here than he did compared to the three Tanko. Two more chances compared to the Black Shard room um, and one less chance compared to the Elton room. You have quite a good number of Kalkishas in this rotation. So it's kind of comparable to the Black Shard room in that sense and it's better than the three Tanko and five Elton room for that specific mob.
But the drawback is you don't have any tankers, where you do have tankers in all these other rooms. So it, it shines a little bit ahead in some cases compared to other rooms, but then there's a couple of drawbacks here and there. So, you know, it's got its own character. All these rooms have their own feel and have their own character. So you're not taking away from that character, you're just emphasizing it and making it more plausible for players to choose this rotation over the other ones. And again, not make it as clear cut as it is now between the Black Shard and the Five Elton. <clears throat> so now let's talk about the last rotation, side rotation. I remember the first time I made this video a couple months back, um, I said there was no flow inside. Well, now there's kind of a flow, still sucks. <laughs> Um, I'll go over why. So this first pack is absolutely fine. This first pack here, perfect pack. Nothing wrong with the pack. Um, I'd keep it exactly the same. And clear it out like this. So the, the flurry problem is in the second pack. This whole crisscrossing of packs to aggro right mobs really sucks when you're trying to just chill and grind. So if you come over here, you uh, grab these guys. You have to cut really hard to the right to not aggro that Bolton. And I cut pretty hard to the right. I still aggroed that Bolton that time. So I'm just going to reset and then come back and show you how it would look like and how it did look like in my test because I made sure that this didn't happen once. I had to do a lot of loot scrolls on this room to make sure this didn't happen once to get the ideal number set from um, this rotation. So I'll be back in a minute. So how it's meant to work out is first of all, you've got to hit these guys with a very specific skill depending on what class you have to aggro them properly. And then really, really, really make sure that you go out of your way to make that to make sure that Bolton over there doesn't aggro. These guys have to step forward and now you're good to clear. So like I said, it's annoying. And this is the other issue. This is also what happens when you're really trying to make sure that Bolton bloody aggro it again. I'm not going to cut again. But like I said, this is, like I said, the flow sucks. Even when you do it right, you still don't do it right. So this room needs to change, right? And I'm just going to keep going through it. So imagine that Bolton had an aggro, and I'm not getting CC'd a million times now because I've got all these Boltons and Eltons trying to hit me. And I'd killed the, um, I'd killed all these things like I was meant to, right? This guy sucks to aggro. I usually just don't aggro him because there's one too many mobs um, in this pack. So I'll show you over here. I have to wait for this Bolton to come back now. Oh no, there isn't one too many mobs because I killed the uh, Tutu car. So normally because of the Tutu car, there's one too many mobs. I'd actually aggro the Tutu car because it's easier and I won't aggro the, um, I won't aggro that Demo up in the corner there. So it's annoying, right? So just, well, I, this needs to be overhauled completely, um, in my opinion. I'm never gonna grind here. I don't think anyone in their right mind is gonna grind here unless they have to. Um, another issue, this demol up here as well, he, you can't hit him. Like if you come do a skill over here, like you hit these guys, but the one demol at the very top doesn't get hit either. So another really annoying thing about this specific demo when you're trying to aggro, now, I understand the idea. Uh, let me just... I'm taking a bit too long here. Let me clear these guys so it doesn't mess up with the next pack and then I'll go to the next pack. So I killed that. This 2-2 car I actually killed earlier, which I wasn't meant to do. Which, again, it affected the... Um, it affected... Like I was saying, there's one too many mobs. There would have been, but that was my mistake. So apologies. But anyway... I think you get the idea and then you, you come back and this this is you know there's a couple of annoying demos like you have to really make sure you hit properly because of the hills but once you got it all sorted out it's not that bad so i'm doing a very poor job in being efficient but you get the idea this is a good this is fine this pack here is fine there's no problems it's a little bit annoying but it's you know it's only annoying because of the rest of the packs. It's not going to be annoying if everything else was running smoothly. It'll just be like an extra mechanic that shouldn't be a mechanic, really, because this is a bug that doesn't allow us to hit these things. But anyway, not going to get into that. This doesn't need to change. This doesn't need to change. The change needs to be over there. So I'm going to clear these guys out and cut back and show you what I would be doing differently. So I get why um, the room has been organized this way because it is a very small room. It might be the smallest room. So if you were to make it very easy to pull, 
it, it can end up clearing insanely high trash numbers, right? But it does need to change. So what I would do is take the Elton out over here and then make sure that, just take it back to exactly what it used to be back in the day in this area, just remove the Elton, right? And hopefully that should still be at max capacity. If you need to add one extra mob, it would be nice if you add one extra mob, but you don't have to. If it's just uh, one below mass capacity without the Elton, leave it that way if you feel like it'll be over buffed otherwise. And then, first of all, all the mobs on the right hand side there on that hill, like all the, these three demos that I'm looking at, this Kalkisha and this demo, take them out. Take them all out and take out the um, Bolton, right? And then it's up to you about the mobs over here. So you, the demol as well and the Tutu card, take those guys out. The Kalkisha and the Vodkan, leave them there, right? And the reason I'm saying leave them there, you're then going to leave all the mobs that are there as well. Bring back the Elton and just enough mobs on this side to bring this mob to max capacity and artificially increase the length of the room to artificially increase the time it takes to clear the room so you can't go crazy and get crazy numbers. And then the reason I say leave these... Um, Vodka and Kalkisha over here because it takes a little bit of time to aggro them up to where the Elton is because this is where usually this is where you're going to be standing to clear this pack right and they don't de-aggro the demos and the tutu cart do de-aggro so you can have like some mobs down here to increase the time that it takes to clear this room right and bring out the old mobs and the Elton over here so you're replacing the Elton over there with the Elton over here so now you've increased the size of the room because it's a pretty good um, travel distance to then come back over to this first mob over here. So that does, in my opinion, fix this room. Um, it won't be amazing. So we're going to go over the numbers and then we'll go over what I think would happen with the future numbers and compare this one to the other rooms like we've done before with the other one, with the other stuff in the spreadsheet. Okay, so for the last one, we're looking at side rotation here. So these are numbers that I was pulling between 3 and 3.1k. So without the changes, it's it's less than 5 Elton, a little bit better than main, uh, around the same as 3 Tanko, and a lot worse than Black Shot. So the reasons it's worse, I've gone through. It's You just have those jagged areas where things don't happen the way they should, which really slows down the grind. So if you were to make the changes, I'd imagine this room would be a very minimum 3,300. So these ones, I believe the maximum is going to be 3,300. This one, the minimum is going to be 3,300, right? So I think it'd be more in line with 3.4, 3.5 as it was at the Black Shard room because it'd be much more streamlined at that point. And that's fine. Um, the reason it's fine is because, like I said, with all these changes, these rooms have their own characteristics. So let's look at side compared to the other ones. So if we compare it to 5 Elton, now 5 Elton is okay for it to have less because it's got all those Eltons, those beautiful tongue rad necklaces, the Elton compass parts. You have the chance to get those. So it's worth the sacrifice of a little bit of trash here. Um, so it's, it's okay that this one's going to get a lot more than that because that's already the way it is pretty much between this room and this room, the Black Shard room and 5 Elton room. But what will happen if we look at the other rooms is it's going to have... Um, a bit more trash than main and three tanker room. So let's break that down. So with the main rotation, it's got one more Bolton. So that goes as a plus for the main rotation and a lot more Kalkishas. So that's a plus for the main rotation. You don't get that inside. You get one less Bolton, same number of Eltons, definitely less Kalkishas. Um, the only difference is you've got the tanker. So it's a give and take, you know, it's a little bit here and a little bit away from there. So even though you're getting a bit more trash, there is other reasons that you might want to come to main. 100 150 trash you know that's a good area of forgiveness that you can give for depending on what you're trying to grind for three tanko like you've got less tankos over here than you do in uh, inside than you do in three tanko uh you've got one less elton that's replaced with the bolton so it's a give and take over there and i'm still pretty sure that you've got a few less calcations inside but maybe it's a bit more comparable i can't say without counting it exactly but again, there's some give and take between the three tanko room. And even though you're getting the same number of trash as the uh, Black Shard room, that may be potentially the same number of trash or very similar numbers of trash. You don't have as many Kalkishas for the Black Shards, but you compensate with the extra Bolton, with the extra tanko if the second tanko comes into play. So 
it will have a lot more comparability. If these changes are made in conclusion, now that we're wrapping up, if these changes are made, it will just give more diversity and it will give people an option to pick a room depending on what they feel like grinding for and not like, well, this room is obviously better than all the other rooms, slash the five Elton if I want to get more Tongrad necklace opportunities. Then, you know, it's just, there's no point. If you want more Tongrad necklace opportunities, you're not going to come to these areas. Why would you when you're getting more more trash at five Elton, right? If, if you want more black shards why would you come to main there's probably roughly the same number of um Kalkishas between these two but what for two extra boltons you're willing to sacrifice five six hundred trash i don't think so i don't think that's very realistic um again in conclusion this is good for the community me personally if there's no changes that's fine with me like the way the rooms are right now and the way my gear is especially after kafra's come out if I want to grind Black Shard Room, I'm going to grind Black Shard Room. If I want to grind 5 Elton Room, I'm going to grind 5 Elton Room. And other people that are in the same... There's, there's a good dozen plus people that are in the same situation as I am. If we want to grind one of these rooms, unless all 12 of us are on at the exact same time, um, then there's going to be an issue. But if we're not, then, you know, we got free reign to grind whatever we want. Like, we just have to ask for a jewel for spot. Usually people that I've noticed in, in history over time have become a lot more respectful. You know, we don't get in each other's ways unless there's been a few times recently I'm asking for jewel for spots when I want to specifically grind here or here because these rooms are actually quite full. Black Shard room is almost full all the time. Five Elton, about, I say, 25% of the day it's full. The other 75% is like one or two rooms left over. So... That's it in conclusion. Um, for my regular viewers, if you've made it this far, that's awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And for the devs, I know you do a lot of hard work. I know there's a lot on your plate. There's a lot of things that you want to do with the future of the game. Um, especially, like, there's the console PC. I don't know how much freedom you have to make changes on console compared to PC. Because it's obviously, there's it's a Korean company. And this is a global game in all these different regions. I'm sure there's a lot of red tape that has to be cut through, uh, that has to be maneuvered around um, to be able to make changes. So, you know, I get it if there's no changes made, I understand. But personally, like I said, it won't affect me. It just won't be good for everyone else. All right. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.